It wasn't pretty. It was frustrating at times, but Tennessee got the win over number seven Alabama all on a Tennessee Saturday night. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome into a postcast edition of Locked On Balls here early on a Sunday morning. I appreciate you guys for being here, making Locked On Balls your first listen and uh, some bonus content, some action here on this weekend. Uh, Tennessee, a 24 to 17 win over Alabama. And I'm going to spend the next 20 minutes or so kind of giving some instant reactions. Haven't gone back and watched the tape yet. I've just got back from doing all my on three work ball quest at the stadium. So just got home, want to pop on here and uh, give you guys a little something for Sunday because, uh, you know, Saturday night to, to Monday morning, that's a long time. And certainly when Tennessee gets a win like this, we, we need to talk about it, get some things out there. Uh, first and foremost, boy, <laughs> it's a win. You know, it's and I've said this a couple of times before already. I know you guys might be tired of hearing this, especially you everydayers, but you never apologize for a win. You never apologize for beating Alabama. Okay, yeah, we're going to talk about Nico struggling. We're going to talk about the offense struggling in the first half for sure. You can be fr- – and, and again, I this is my opinion. I can't tell you how to fan. But you can be frustrated all you want. You can be aggravated. You can be downright mad at points in times. But at the end of the day, Tennessee beat Alabama – on a th- on a on a Saturday night, okay, for the second time in as many tries as it is at, ne- at Neyland Stadium, um, you beat Alabama, okay, you beat the top ten team, you remain firmly in the college football playoff conversation. Uh, you, <laughs> you're back to back weeks of beating your rivals here, and I think something encouraging is, boy, did you not play your best football, <laughs> right? You did not play your best football at all. And wins over Florida and wins over Alabama. Yet you're finding ways to win football games, and you have a an elite defense, as Josh Heupel called it several times in the post game press conference Saturday night. So hats off, Tennessee. Right now, I mean, look at this, guys. Tennessee is a five and one. Excuse me, excuse me. Tennessee is a six and one football team. Tennessee is a three and one football team in Southeastern Conference play, and you've got a bye week coming up right now to where you can sit, you can relax, you can get healthy. You can try to work on your offense, still try to improve some things, and then get into the stretch of games in your schedule to where you should handle, but nothing's a given, especially this season. But you've got Kentucky coming up at home. you got Mississippi State coming up at home. Uh, I don't know if it's UTEP first or Georgia, but you got UTEP. you got on the road at Athens at Georgia, and then, of course, on the road at Vanderbilt at the end of the regular season. You are in position for a college football playoff berth. L- look at what's happening right now. Around call around the SEC. Well, we were hoping for Texas to come back and win that football game to give Georgia its second loss, but Alabama's got two losses now. Okay, so you're starting to see teams kind of whittle themselves out, and you're seeing the SEC kind of eat its own, right? If you had two losses at the end of the regular season from the Southeastern Conference, you are 100% in the conversation and might even have, you know, not, not a shoe in, but you have a good case to make the college football playoff. There's going to be several teams, in my opinion, that are going to be right around two losses. Was hoping Texas would come back and give Georgia that second loss, but Alabama's got two losses now. Alabama's got to run the table the rest of the way just to have it, just to be, you know, a seat at the table for a conversation. That's not Tennessee. We talked about that leading up to this week. You are in a great position entering the back stretch of games here in the regular season. Boy, how about that? But you beat Alabama again from 2000 and whatever it was, 2007 to 2021, that just didn't happen. Right, I mean that just didn't happen, and you had that long streak, and now you've you beaten Alabama twice at Neyland Stadium the past two times. This is not the same Alabama team from Nick Saban, that is for sure. Now, do I think this is a bad Alabama football team? No, I don't think they're bad, but that secondary is not Nick Saban coached. Kane Womack is not Nick Saban, that is for sure. That defense, not very good. I mean, what's encouraging here? is for the second straight game, Tennessee had guys running wide open. Is Tennessee connecting on those? No. Is Tennessee taking advantage of those? No. But for the second straight game, Tennessee's got guys running wide the freak open. you got to think sooner or later you're going to connect on some of those, and then again, it changes the whole course of the ball game. Things are not well per se offensively. It's not all roses. I'm not going to sit here and act like things are horrible, but... Gosh darn, guys, you just beat Alabama. 
you celebrate, you ride this, you 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 love this, right? I mean, the tw- the the regular season is only twelve games, and it comes and goes at the blink of an eye. And uh, I know some of you guys are enjoying this and smoking your cigars, and some of you guys are frustrated a little bit, and that's okay. But boy, enjoy this, man. Especially ride this off into the uh, into the bye week because I got to tell you, man, in, in my profession, in my industry, boy, I was rooting for a Tennessee win in the worst way. Okay, because number one, I I want it because life is better when Tennessee wins. Number two, I did not want two weeks of just crazy talk. Okay, I didn't want two weeks of crazy talk coming off a loss. And certainly, my numbers here on the podcast is much better when Tennessee's winning. Ever since the Arkansas loss, you know the numbers have been down a little bit. So I was hoping and praying and all that for for business reasons for a win. Of course, I just want Tennessee to win. You guys know that. And, and Tennessee found a way. But for the second straight game, who? Ooh, the offense in the first half was abysmal. But hey, you have an elite defense that keeps you in the football game. Keeps you in the football game. Look at this drive chart here. The drive chart here for Alabama in the first half. Punt, punt, interception, touchdown. Punt, punt, miss field goal, punt. Or mm, miss field goal was the last one of the first half. Sure, they scored a touchdown. They went 64 yards on eight plays and did it in relatively quick fashion there. But interception when they were on the Tennessee three-yard line. What's up, Jermaine McCoy? Punt, punt. Interception, touchdown, punt, punt, miss field goal. Your defense is allowing you to be in position to hang in this football game and just buying your offense enough time. And finally, finally, the offense gets it going there in the second half. What was the difference offensively from half number one to half number two? We'll dive into that a little bit more. Plus, a couple more thoughts and big picture takeaways. Tennessee, a 24-17 win over, over Alabama on the third Saturday in October. Tennessee, a 6-1 and one and 3-1 and one in Southeastern Conference play. Celebrate, guys. Hey, I want to tell you guys about my friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for small businesses, you want to find quality professionals that arrive for the role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just like any other job board, okay? LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else and those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open for the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. 86% of small businesses get qualified candidates within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional that is on LinkedIn. 2.5 2.5 small bi- 2. 2.5 million that's a key word there million small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring so why aren't you post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions do apply so big thanks to LinkedIn big thanks to game time you can download the game time app or go to gametime.co put in the promo code locked on college you're going to get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, put in that promo code Locked On College when you download the Game Time app or go to GameTime.co for twenty dollars off. What is the Game Time app? Well, it is a place where you can buy tickets to events, entertainment events in your area, sporting events. It was a scene at Neyland Stadium tonight, guys. Whoo! The puff of it's cigar smoke and other smoke <laughs> in the realm. Um, you've got the fireworks going off. There was a a field storming, and I'll get to that here in a moment. But nonetheless, the environment was just top notch. I mean, it's it's what college football is all about. And maybe you bought that game time, you bought that ticket to witness all that on the game time app. You can buy tickets to watch the basketball team and the Lady Balls and, and the Food City Center coming up this winter. Uh, baseball, Lindsey Nelson Stadium this spring, all that and more. But also ca- uh, concerts, monster truck rallies, comedy shows, whatever event is in your area, you can buy tickets on the game time app. Lowest price guaranteed. All in prices plus the game time picks, all that and more. Go to check it out on the game time app. Put in that promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Tennessee twenty four, Alabama seventeen. Tennessee has beaten Alabama each of its last two times at Neyland Stadium. Tennessee is six and one, three and one in Southeastern Conference play. A win is a win, and you take it every single day of the week. And I'll tell you what, man, like I said this a little bit kind of coming into the week. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, ten, up until Alabama, Alabama was clearly the best offense Tennessee faced. And, <laughs> well, Tennessee's defense just continued uh, to do what it does. Um, but, you know, I said, like, even though Tennessee hadn't faced a juggernaut yet offensively, anytime, even though Tennessee hadn't faced, like, a, a really, really great quarterback, I mean, Tennessee's defense, you kind of are who you are at this point in the season, right? 
Well, you're seven games into the season. You just played the best quarterback that's going to be on your schedule. Carson Beck later on in the season. Of course, we can have a conversation about that. And you held Alabama to 314 yards of total offense. You held Alabama to 239 yards passing. You held Alabama to 75 yards rushing. You held Alabama to three of 14 on third downs. You held Alabama to two touchdowns and four red zone opportunities. I mean, what more do you want, man? This defense is incredible. You had nine TFLs. You had, what was it? Let's see here. You had nine TFLs. You had three sacks. James Pierce just continues to come alive, and uh, he is playing his best football right now. Dominic Bailey had a great game. Will Brooks seals the game with an interception. We'll hear it at courtesy of the Vol Radio Network on Monday's show. Will Brooks from Birmingham, Alabama, who walked on at Tennessee, who caught stray after stray after stray all offseason because Tennessee fans didn't want Will Brooks to play safety because he's not good and he's a walk-on, right? Well, I got news for you guys. Will Brooks is your best safety, okay? Jacoby Thomas is f- quick. He's 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 um, He shoots the gap. He's a great blitzer. But all around right now, Will Brooks is your best safety. And he's playing like it. And he sealed the game with that interception there at the end. How about that? Jermon McCoy is Dylan Sampson wholeheartedly is on the way to an All-American season, All-SEC. Jermon McCoy is the same way. Jermon McCoy is so good at corner. And I thought, I, I thought Ricky Gibson had a tougher day against Alabama, against Ryan Williams, Jeremy Bernard. But he still made some plays. Tennessee's corners are good. You miss Keenan Peely. You very much miss Keenan Peely, but Jeremiah T. Lander, Arian Carter, Caleb Perry, Jalen Smith, they got it done the other night. And of course, what more can you say about the defensive line? You just, I mean, they just keep coming and coming and coming, man. Uh, Bryson Eason, Amari Thomas, Omar Norman Lott, Dominic Bailey. Um, they're good. They're really, really good. And, and, and sure, there were times... There were times where Alabama marched down the field and scored a touchdown. You're just like, man, it's just too easy. Man, it's too easy. Man, it's too easy. And that's fair. Defense was tired. You know why? Because defense played its lights out. Defense made stop after stop. Third down after third down. Forced turnovers. Forced two turnovers in this football game that were just huge for Tennessee. And it allowed your offense to play catch up. And finally, the offense to play catch up. Might as well, when you play Kentucky in two weeks, might as well put a three on the scoreboard there to start things off. And then maybe Tennessee's offense will get going. You know what I'm saying? Right? I mean, Tennessee's second half adjustments were key in that locker room because Tennessee comes out, even in the Arkansas game, where they just had two drives and that was it. They came out, scored on those two offensive possessions, and then they were back to their old self. And that was not great. But, you know, Florida, Tennessee scored. 23 second half points and overtime. Uh, Tennessee scored 24 second half points here tonight. And of course, third straight game is shut out in the first half. That can't continue. That cannot continue. But Dylan Sampson, explosive plays. Nico had a long run on that scoring drive in the third quarter. Dylan Sampson, a, a gain of 36 yards, and then Tennessee gets in the end zone. On the second touchdown scoring drive, Tennessee. Uh, Nico hits Dante Thornton down the sideline for a gain of 50 some odd yards, and, and Tennessee's able to punch it in there. And, and and do what it does, um, <clears throat> man. And and then the 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 touchdown to Chris Brazel, oh my gosh, what a dime! What a beautiful ball there to the back of the end zone that Tennessee secures, takes the lead, twenty one to seventeen. And then Tennessee, a smart coaching decision. I was texting one of my, one of my buddies during this time, and it was like fourth and two, fourth and three, whatever it was from, you know, around the thirty yard line. And he was like, "Do you go for it and end it right here?" And I said. I would like, you would want to do that, but if you kick this field goal, you make it a seven-point game, make it a touchdown game, that's the smart coaching decision, and that's what Josh Heupel did. Max Gilbert connected on a 41-yard field goal. Um, Tennessee was so desperate for points that they sent them out there to try two 50-yarders, a 53-yarder and a 51-yarder, and a 53-yarder just missed, and the other one was kind of low and wobbly, and it didn't look good to begin with, but... Man, Tennessee was so desperate to score points, they put him out there in that situation because, you know, Nico in the first half, boy, wide open receivers, couldn't connect down the field. Very frustrating, okay? Nico was so very bad at points and times in the first half. Now, respect, he got smacked off that turf. I thought he had a concussion. According to the television broadcast, apparently, uh, it was something with his hip. But, you know, he goes out, Gassimore comes in, and, you know, Gaston Moore's flushed out of the pocket. I believe it was third down. Again, I, I miss a lot of things in real time. I'll go back and watch the tape tomorrow. 
a Sunday afternoon. But uh, I believe Gaston Moore it was a third down, so he needed to throw the football, and he was flush out of the pocket. That clock sped up, and he threw it, and of course it was picked off. Uh, but Tennessee defense made a stand on the ensuing, like from from the pickoff, right? They took it down to Tennessee 45. Three plays, make negative nine yards. Tennessee forced a punt. Just another example of the Tennessee defense of what it was. But Nico came back, man. I mean, he came back. He played really well in the second half. His interception, oh my gosh. I mean, two times this year, Nico has stared down a receiver, thrown into triple coverage, picked off. At NC State, he had the ball where he threw it and got clobbered at the same time. That was a pick six because that was bad. Um, you had the, the the silly running out of bounds at the end of the game at Arkansas. Um, you had another one last week, I felt like. But you had one of those just stupid young quarterback mistakes that you continue to say, boy, I hope you learn from this. But, man, you're in game seven. You need to be learning from these. I mean, you are two feet from the sideline. And, and everybody in media row that I'm sitting up there with saying, just throw it away, just throw it away, step out of mouth, just throw it away, just throw it away. And no, he tries to force it to Brew in the back of the end zone with three guys between him and Brew McCoy, and it's an easy interception. What a silly, stupid decision right there. And you hope he learns from it, but the majority of his interceptions are not bad throws. They're dumb decisions. They're just dumb decisions. He's got to learn from that. But Nico, man, he could not hit. He could not hit wide open guys. Since he had guys running wide open, wide open at points in times, and he missed. But I'll tell you what, for as inconsistent and bad as Nico was in the first half, and he's got to be better. I'll, I'll have more on this after the rewatch and on Monday's show. I'll say this. The wide receivers, I thought, were horrendous tonight. Horrendous. Um, Squirrel White was playing hurt. I think he I think he hurt Tennessee at times with not trying to use two hands. Uh, Brew McCoy had a drop. Chris Brazel had a drop. A um, couple other guys had it. I mean, it's like when Nico would make a great throw, his receivers weren't helping him out. And then when the receivers were helping him out to get open, Nico wasn't making the right throw. It's just it, it was never, never tied together. Very frustrating. But the run game went, you know, the run game got going there in the second half, and Tennessee had some explosives. Tennessee had some explosives, and that was great to see. End of the day, Tennessee found a way. Tennessee woke up late. That defense carried them yet to another victory. Tennessee, a final score 24 to 17 over the vault over the uh, Crimson Tide. And the storm, the 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 storming of the field. I'll talk more about this on Monday's show, but it was very I was in the press box when it happened, so I watched the whole thing. It was very slow motion, right? It was like I don't think we should do this. You know, it was the recruits that started everything. The recruits jumped out on the field, and then some members of the student section kind of came on, and then before you knew it, everybody was on the field. But goalposts were gone. My opinion doesn't matter. Everybody was asking about my my opinion. This is just mine alone. Act like you've been there, guys. This is not a massive, massive upset. This this didn't snap a 15-game losing streak. You were the number 11 team in the country. You're supposed to be there. You're supposed to win those games at home. Act like you were there. That was kind of disappointing, in my opinion. But at the end of the day, I'm not taking anything away from this win. Celebrate this win. Huge win. Okay, enjoy this win. Tennessee got this win going into the bye week, and that's massive. That's magnificent. A chance to rest up, try to get better offensively, try to figure it out, and let this defense get a, a, a very well-deserved you know, week. Not off, because they're still going to work, but they can rest up and recuperate a little bit. Great win. Great win. Tennessee, again, is 6-1, and 3-1 and one in Southeastern Conference play and firmly remaining in the college football playoff conversation. All this on a Tennessee Saturday night. It's always great when Tennessee beats Alabama. Always great. Congrats if you were at the game. If you weren't at the game, hope you smoked a cigar at home. We'll be back Monday morning. All this and more, plenty more Tennessee-Alabama talk right here on Locked on Balls. <laughs>